We talk about how one of the problems we have with ISIS as an enemy is their sophistication with social media. Social media is a part of our world now in peacetime and in war. And I guess, unfortunately, because it's become a bit of a controversy, one of our military leaders put out a tweet for which he was admonished. Yeah, I didn't uh, come across the tweet by Lieutenant General Yvan Blondin, or Blondin um, who tweeted out support for our forces in theater. Here's his tweet. He's, he tweets out, thinking of you, dear ISIL, thinking of you, some of my colleagues are in your area. Hopefully they'll have a chance to drop by. I liked it. <laughs> I loved it. But I, I didn't find out about it until, of course, the mainstream uh, media party, CBC and the Toronto Star, were running stories criticizing him for having done this. I think it's wonderful to see a, he's the commander, in fact, of the Royal Canadian Air Force. He's the number one guy there. You know, he's got three maple leaves on his, uh, on his uh, epaulettes. He's the big dog. And it sends out a very strong pro-troop uh, message. And he was strongly linking ISIL to the murders on our downed servicemen, our downed warfighters from last week. And that's great for morale. So I say good for him. Well, uh, I'll give you a, a, a kind of a devil's advocate uh, argument here that I heard made by someone else because I said on the radio earlier this morning that I liked it. And somebody said, you know, if it was a one-off thing like that, maybe you could just say, hey, that's great. But the problem is if the commander does that, then everybody below him thinks they have uh, the opportunity to do that and soldiers are supposed to be just button down head down get the job done don't be out there doing snarky tweets about the about the war I think there's a difference between the mandate of soldiers who are trained to not comment on politics. Yeah. That is an important distinction that, with which I agree. However, I don't see this as that. I see this as a general uh, making a statement in defense of his comrades in arms, his brothers in arms, and it's a, a demonstration of the esprit de corps and the fact that they have each other's backs. I don't see this as a political statement. I see it as just support for a downed war fighter and, and a motivator, motivating message to uh, the radical Muslims who... Uh, uh, they'll be dropping bombs on to kill because they should. All right. Um, now you put out a tweet about it and got some response. <laughs> so I tweeted out my response for uh, the general's comments. And I, I found it interesting that uh, typical social media, I don't know if we can throw one of them up on the board. Uh, we had uh, a couple of flame responses from uh, this uh, fellow, Graham Chivers. Yes, it seems Kevin Gannett is under the delusion that an airstrikes are an effective tool. And I would say to this, uh, this left-wing appeaser, this Chamberlain-like individual, that yeah, airstrikes are an effective tool. They kill the bad guys, which is exactly what we need to be doing right now. Hugging a terrorist isn't the way to go. But it's not the only left-wing response that I got as well. We get other peaceniks who, who, uh, who spouted off. In this case, uh, Penny Mills wrote, uh, Kevin, you can't put people, you, you can't, can't bomb. bomb people out of beliefs, but airstrikes kill civilians and add more anger toward the West. Yeah, well, um, the anger is towards the radical Muslims that are trying to take over Iraq and Syria, put in place a radical Muslim caliphate that's going to put down the freedoms and interests of, of women and freedom lovers in the region. And I think that's something that we should be proud of to stand behind. And I don't know what these people believe. They, they believe that we shouldn't be part of the coalition. They believe that we shouldn't be bombing. They believe somehow that we should just hug these people and that'll make them stop wanting to take over Iraq and Syria. And they're just wrong. What are the chances that that um, the people who are that person who's sending you this, uh, you know, they're mad at us because we're fighting back, are the kinds of people who would go around uh, saying to a lot of people, never blame the victim, never blame the victim. We're the victim here. Well, that's exactly right. Uh, I find it so incredulous that these people make these types of comments because. It, if you want to go back to the first premise of the argument, what is it, folks, you would like us to do to stop these people in these countries in Iraq and Syria from undertaking their mass executions, their beheadings, their killing of 100 people in, in, in the town on the weekend, for example, the Sunnis that were opposing them? What is it they would like us to do to stop that? And, and they don't have a response. They just say we should all just sing kumbaya and be peaceful. And well, it's just if they not do, realistic. No, if they do have a response, it was actually implicit in that tweet that you received, uh, which was just stop fighting them and they will leave us alone. If we leave them alone, then they'll leave us alone. The, the delusion, of course, is that somehow um, they hate us because of something we've done. They seem to hate everybody who isn't exactly them. And not just us, by the way, fellow Muslims. Well, and it's also the irony that somehow it's acceptable to allow them to kill off folks in Syria and Iraq 
um, as if that's acceptable in and of itself, and is also willfully blind to the fact that eventually they're coming here. And we've got to stop them in their tracks where they are, not just hope that they don't come here. We need to ensure they, they don't come here, just like in World War I when Chamberlain was trying to appease and play, play peacemaker. It wasn't the way to go then, and this is not the way to go now. Well, it's not eventually they come here. We've had a couple of they're incidents. Here. Yes, they're here. Their influence, at least, is here. Uh, I am not going to be so bold as to see that after the uh, attacks uh, a, a week and a half, two weeks ago, um, we're done with that. Uh, we've had a bunch of potential terrorist actions stopped ahead of time, and thanks to all of those people who worked that out and uh, <laughs> kept us safe. But uh, the, the danger is already here. Thanks so much. Thank you, sir. Uh